when we look at the dynamics of the US dollar, for most regions in the world, our job is quite simple because policymakers throughout the world are quite predictable. Not so in Japan. Japan has been a downward spiral for many years. At the same time, the yen has been quite strong. To understand how that can be, let's look at what Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke has said repeatedly. He said to get out of the Great Depression, two things have been crucial. One was the guarantee of retail deposits in the 1930s. Equate that to the guarantee of the entire banking system today. The other was to get off the gold standard, to allow the price level to rise, to induce inflation. He didn't say to induce inflation, but that's the obvious interpretation that, that we take. And fast forward to today, um, well, think about it. If one takes away half of your purchasing power, you have an incentive to work harder. So you're going to get top line growth if you debase a currency, if you induce inflation. Now, the flip side of that is, if you don't do that, if you don't intentionally weaken your currency, you may get very meager economic growth. You may get a recession, a depression, but you're going to have a stronger currency. And that's the context in which to see the yen, also the euro, by the way. What's happening in, Euro in Europe is nothing to write home about, yet the currency is strong. And it's precisely because the central bank in Europe shows more restraint. Now, is everything well in the world, in Europe, in Japan? Well, definitely not. But as long as one doesn't rock the boat too heavily, as long as other issues don't flare up, one should have a strong currency. And in Europe, to, to conclude that maybe, um, the European Central Bank has been providing unlimited liquidity to the banking system. And so as a result, we may have zombie banks, but these banks are, are kept alive because of the support given by the European Central Bank. Now, Japan is all different. The previous government had been in power for decades. Now we have an opportunity to rock the boat. We have a new government. So we have to think about what does the new government want? What are the policies of the new government? The real challenge is that while the new government has a manifesto, um, we are not so sure whether they're going to follow through with it. Indeed, I don't think they are sure of exactly what they want to do. The primary driver seems to be to reverse many of the policies the previous government has had in place, something popular also in other places in the world. Um, in general, the policies of the new Japanese government is a mix of socialism and pro-business rules. Something that seems pretty hard to understand um, from a Western point of view, but in the context of the Japanese history might be more understandable. Now, looking more at the currency world, um, the Japanese government wants to get rid of wasteful spending, but introduce all kinds of other programs. Um, including welfare programs um, and uh, subsidies, um, getting rid of road tolls, very similar to other places in the world, including the US, where one wants to finance spending by cutting wasteful spending, uh, which is pretty much just the political point of view of where to direct the spending, overall quite likely to be quite expensive. The one key thing that the Japanese want to do is um, they want to dismantle the power of the bureaucrats in Japan quite honorable in general to have a more federalist system, want to move power over to the regions, but unfortunately they want to replace those bureaucrats with politicians rather than get rid of them entirely. So ultimately what will come out of it um, may not be a more agile system, but might just be a more politically driven system. With regard to the yen, the previous government for many years had said they don't want a strong yen because a strong yen hurts export. In the final months of the previous administration, um, the administration had been in complete disarray. Also, the Bank of Japan had no longer received instructions to intervene in the markets. And as a result, the yen was allowed to float higher. The new government uh, had said that they want to have a strong yen. And sure enough, they plotted um, when the consumers had a stronger purchasing power. It's all just in a matter of weeks now, um, since the new government is in place only very recently. Um, now, having said that, the Japanese economy is an export-driven economy with the world's best exporters, or some of the world's best exporters, and the world's worst consumers. So the consumers are not going to pick up the slack. And sure enough, within a few days of the yen rising, um, the policymakers said, well, maybe we want market forces to guide the yen. Um, another couple of days later, um, policymakers come out and saying, well, maybe we don't want such a strong yen, and we never said that we want a strong yen. All of this 
leads one to conclude that the future in Japan is rather uncertain. And as a result, traders are not waiting until the Japanese are making up their mind on which direction they want, want to go in. But instead, one of the side effects of what's been happening is that rather than borrowing money in yen to buy riskier assets elsewhere, the funding currency of what's called the carry trade is moving away from the yen to the US dollar. It's become more popular to borrow money in the US where money is plentiful available and to buy riskier assets in other currencies or elsewhere. And um, as a result, which that this, this, this process may, may take years to, to be fully in place, um, but the yen, because of the surrounding uncertainty, is not as popular anymore to be shorted, to be sold by other currencies, which would strengthen the yen. Now, do we like the yen in the end? Well, it's a mixed blessing. It's a mixed blessing. If there is no intervention in the yen, if market forces were to play out, then the yen should rise as the economy continues to spiral downward. Ultimately, we believe the government will flip-flop on many of its policies. These policies will be very expensive and intervention may rise. And so it's a very risky bet to continue betting on the yen, but at the same time, as there may be a continuation of the credit crisis, some funding issues, it will continue to be a safe haven. For more details, please go to our website, merckfund.com, sign up to our newsletter. In an upcoming video, we'll discuss the euro, uh, the pound sterling in more detail, and the pound sterling, by the way, you may see ahead of what is ahead in the cards for the US. Um, and you'll also learn about other currencies. MerckFund.com, please sign up to our newsletter and subscribe to this video. I'm Max from Merck, the Portfolio Manager at Merck Mutual Funds.